Great. Can begin. Okay. Good morning. I will welcome you all to the open <clears throat> space and recreation plan at our committee meeting of Friday, April 7. And pursuant, I have to read this paragraph. This is formally to advise that as required by MGL Chapter 30A, Sections 18 through 25, and pursuant to Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, and an act relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations signed into law on July 16, 2022, and extended on March 29, 2023, through a supplemental budget bill, the OSRP ad hoc committee will hold a public meeting at the date and time noted on the notice of meeting. The public is welcome to attend either in person or via the alternative public access provided on the notice of meeting available on the Town of Yarmouth website. Welcome, everyone. The, uh, do we go over to Cassie uh, to start? Or we're sure. I think we're, we're really continuing some of the work that we've done before and taking a look at the completion of the site evaluation forms and going over. They have a bunch of questions they'd like to ask and then reviewing the updated draft goals, objectives, and action items, and then the uh, draft second survey. So I think I know that Lauren had some, developed some stuff on the site assessments that she wanted to go over uh, with the group. Okay. Lauren, it's up to yours. <laughs> all right, just sharing my screen. Um, can you all see? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so we put together um, a summary graphic of the findings from the eleven sites that we had visited. Um, and so what we found uh, when we were going through the assessments is that there were different themes or opportunities that came up um, across the sites. So several sites kind of had different themes. Um, and so these are listed below here. And so what we did was um, note how many times each one of the themes came up and then assigned the icon to each one of the sites. So I can go through what each of the themes are. Um, so more than six sites, we noticed that there's opportunities to improve um, accessible connections between site elements. Um, so pathways between like, for example, tennis courts, um, beach access, parking. Um, uh, the second one is add or upgrade accessible amenities. So opportunities to add things like accessible bench spaces or picnic tables. Um, three to five of the sites, um, we noted things like upgrade court surfacing, um, improved playground accessibility. So anything related to the playground structure or surfacing or access. Um, upgrading or removing old structures, um, so anything like boardwalks, ramps, uh, adding signage, uh, both that includes wayfinding and historic or interpretive signage, um, implement erosion control, um, anything related to parking, so add or upgrade accessible parking, um, also includes uh, parking surfacing, uh, anything related to fields, including drainage, grading, infield renovation, or backstop. Uh, opportunities to improve accessible connections to the water. And then in one to two of the sites, um, a couple of other opportunities that came up at uh, manage invasive plants, uh, implement a dune protection strategy, uh, protect endangered species, um, and armor against rising sea level. Can I um, chime in, Lauren, just for a second? Yeah. Yep. Um, because I'll forget it. Um, the all the thing, all the symbols that are in blue mm -hmm. um, are all things that are being looked at through the climate change and um, vulnerability assessment that Woods Hole Group is doing right now. And I'm having a brain cramp. I, I don't I don't know that we put that in. I know we put in the recreational assessment and the townways to water assessment. Um, but Kathy, do you know, did we put anything in about that climate change and, and vulnerability assessment? Yeah, the MVP grant with the, yeah. um, yes, it's in here. Okay, great. 
because I, I was just on a Zoom with them yesterday uh, about some of these areas that you have, you know, the packet landing uh, in particular um, and in terms of sea level rise. So that's all. I just wanted to make sure that that was mentioned in the plan. It's under um, action item 3H-2, utilizing municipal vulnerability preparedness grant uh, to complete an infrastructure vulnerability assessment to identify vulnerable municipal assets and develop a list of the highest priority projects for implementation. Perfect. So I think we're good. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, okay. okay, that sounds good. Um, and so I can step through each one of the sites. So Gray's Beach, um, we noticed opportunities to improve accessible connection, opportunities to add or upgrade accessible amenities, such as the benches there, um, uh, opportunity to upgrade the, or the playground. Um, one of the notes that we had there was there's potential to move it to a more visible location um, when it's ready for replacement. Um, and then some of the parking areas aren't accessible, so there's an opportunity to um, look at the surfacing and um, mark the spaces there. Um, for Yarmouth Port Playground, um, accessible oh. connections between amenities, uh, um, looking at upgrading accessible amenities there as well, um, opportunity to improve the playground surfacing, um, and then upgrades to both the courts and the fields. Um, at Peter Homer Park, um, again, opportunities to upgrade the amenities there, um, the playground equipment, um, when that's ready to be replaced, some of the playground equipment is aging. Um, there's also an opportunity to improve the surfacing there to be accessible, uh, and also court surfacing. Um, and field improvements, uh, particularly that multi-use field that's um, closer to the entrance. Uh, at Horse Pond, um, uh, upgrading some of the old structures. There's some old benches that are throughout the site, um, accessible parking, uh, wayfinding. So uh, adding signage to where the trails fork to make wayfinding easier. Uh, and then there are a couple of endangered species that were noted uh, when we walked the site there. At Sandy Pond, uh, there's an opportunity for accessible pathways between the different elements of the site, uh, opportunities to upgrade the court surfacing, um, as well as the fields, uh, the infields there, uh, there's opportunity to renovate uh, with a new infield mix, um, accessible parking spots, near the court and the multi-use field. Uh, we noticed some signs of erosion near the beach and the path down to the beach is relatively steep. So there's an opportunity to improve the accessible connection. At the mill, uh, there's um, an opportunity to expand uh, accessible connection uh, specifically between the parking lot and the trail down to the mill. Uh, opportunity to add um, seating bench or benches, um, historic sign interpretive signage could be added, uh, and invasive species management down to the pond. Uh, at the sailing center, um, again, the accessible connections, uh, add accessible amenities, there's also the playground equipment. If that's a spot that's uh, more well used, there's opportunity to um, improve and upgrade the playground there. Um, erosion control and uh, invasives were noted on the site walk. Um, at Flax Pond, mm -hmm. um, accessible connections between amenities. Some of the kind of ancillary areas uh, didn't have accessible connections. Uh, there's also that field, the turf is kind of old, so there's an opportunity to upgrade the field there. Um, erosion noted near the beach and opportunity to connect the paths um, down to the water. There's a 
accessible overlook ramp down by the water, but um, we thought that there could be an opportunity to connect from the main paths down to the beach area and to that overlook. At Packet Landing, um, opportunity to expand uh, the accessible connection, particularly at the lower area. Um, there could be a curb cut there, and then the, that path that goes to the stairs could be uh, an accessible surface. Uh, old structures. So I know, I think it was Gail who noted that that ramp is going to be replaced. Um, I wasn't sure if it was in the spring or in the coming months, um, but that was what that one represents. Right. Uh, um, um, the, yeah. ramp? the ramp at the marina? No. I think I think that was uh, getting rid of the um, stockade fence that went around the old Johnny on the spot. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Is Johnny on the spot of porta potty? Yes. Johnny? Okay. <laughs> the band That's right there. Yeah, there's that old. Thank you. I like that. Yeah. Neither have I. Um, and then, so armoring against rising sea level, uh, that lower parking lot is um, there's an opportunity to armor there for future flooding. Um, at the Raymond Sergala Conservation Area, uh, there is an old overlook, so an opportunity to upgrade that overlook structure, uh, and uh, also opportunity to improve the wayfinding signage there. Um, it's Smuggler's Beach, um, upgrading accessible amenities, improving the accessible connection to the water, upgrading old structures, um, and then implementing a dune protection strategy for those dunes that are between the parking lot and the beach. One, one um, note on the Ray Sorella conservation area. Um, mm -hmm. So I was at a meeting a couple of weeks ago um, in terms of the wastewater project, and it's actually um, we looked at that area. We, we looked at the abutting cranberry bogs that the town owns and, and uh, our harvester leases. And um, there's that water control structure that I think is what you're talking about, what, that you called an overlook. Um, and, and as part of the wastewater plan, I think that's going to be improved and removed right there. Um, no, Bill, when we were there, there was there's actually like the remnants of an old location where people used to overlook next to that weir. It's next like looking at looking at the water. It's pretty overgrown right now. Oh yeah. So there's a little pond back there, but yeah. the the concrete fish way that you were looking at. Um, that's what I'm talking about. It's yeah. probably going to be removed and upgraded. Yeah, and I think we also noted there was one boardwalk connection that was redone and new that we looked yeah. at, and there was one that um, needed to be extended a bit because the mud situation yeah. is now extending beyond. So it's just like continuing on that process of re replacing them as you are able to. Yeah. Are we going to review each of the site things, the comments? Yeah, I, I think maybe you had some very specific questions. I had some very, yes. I had a few comments on the actual site assessments and I think maybe Christine did. So maybe if we not necessarily go over the whole thing, but maybe try to answer the questions that you have, or at least get them out there and we can find the answers from the person uh, who has the answer. Um, and then maybe we can just provide any individual comments we might have specifically on um, okay. a sheet. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. That sounds good. Um, so I just brought the questions up, um, if you can still see my screen. So for Flax Pond, um, no, we're seeing the old one. You need to move oh, over to the seeing... site assess. Yeah. Just click the other tab and I think you're going to be there. Um, catering is brought in, but there's no consent. Let me just. Right. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, 
It's so for flax pond, I can zoom in too. That. Um, uh, just confirming if there's any concessions. It looks like uh, based on what we were able to find online, no, but we just wanted to confirm with you. Yeah, there's no concessions there. There's there's a kitchen for use a, from the lodge, right? Is or is it a kitchen or is so it there's like a, a kitchen with an oven and a fridge in it that people use for events, but not for um, public. Sense. We don't like let people come in and use it for concessions. Mm -hmm. for, yeah, yeah, so usually it's small little parties, little birthday cakes, or just catering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no concession. Okay. Um, is there any irrigation? So in the back lawn behind the lodge itself, there's irrigation. And then there's also irrigation around like that playground where the trees are. Uh, and that's, that's as far as I know, that's the only irrigation. Okay. <clears throat> um, is there any fishing allowed at the swimming area? Uh, well, I believe Bill might be able to answer that better, but when during our summer camp, we have fishing uh, fishing lines, swimming lines out there that we don't let anyone fish in. Um, but I don't know, Bill, uh, Bill, I don't know if you might be able I to. I mean, we, we don't have any restrictions yeah. in terms of like when camp is not in session or, um, I mean, it, it's open <laughs> to the public when camp's not in session, right? So, right. yeah. I mean, yeah. we we would just make sure they had a, a license if required, depending on their age, and check their, you know, their catch in terms of their catch limit or size limit. But we don't have any restrictions for fishing there. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Um, at Horse Pond, uh, is there any programming or like guided hikes or classes that take place? No, no. <clears throat> Um, a packet landing where the trees put in with the new building there. What, what trees are you referring to? I mean, the only landscaping that was put in as part of the pavilion was some small shrubs in the front for the handicap okay. access from the upper parking lot. So no trees were put in as part of that. Okay. Pavilion. <laughs> As part of the pavilion, uh, when right. they did the park, they put trees in, but that right. was a long, long time right. ago. Right, but that was a while ago. Right. I don't know whether they had, I don't know what the small trees are, whether they're, are they newer trees that you were, it doesn't really matter. They, were, they weren't put in as part of the uh, of the pavilion, I guess. There's only okay. one spread at the base. That's it. That's right. the only tree there that's somebody dedicated. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Right. Um. Is there any programming, guided hikes, or classes? No. Sorry. No, no. It's passive. Any historic information at um, Sandy Pond? <laughs> We've done a little looking around online, and we didn't see anything about that. So we weren't sure if there's any information that you have there. Only hearsay. I hear there used to be a big nightclub on the pond, and there's a whole bunch right. of beer bottles out there. <laughs> right. It does have a sorted past. Yes. Yes. I'm not, I'm not sure you want to put that in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, be a nightclub on the it has no good history. Like, <laughs> the Historical Society has a lot of pictures, uh, you know, from town from way back. You know, I don't think I've them. ever seen any. I've never seen on. I was president, and I never saw any. <laughs> Anything on Sandy Pond. Yeah. Okay. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any plans or drawings for the playground that's under construction there? I think in the RFP, there was actually a link to the uh, ZBA uh, application and plans, and I'm sure it hasn't changed significantly, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. if at all. It's changed over time. So From the Zoning Board of Appeals permit for the current yeah, yeah. Well, do you, when they came before CPA, you know, there were diagrams, and they changed a lot. No, these were construction CPR documents CPR that were the playground. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. The RFP yeah. may more be more current. Yeah, I'm just okay. saying that they went and got a special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals, right. and they had to submit plans as part of that. Um, and I believe that was included. If not, I can certainly get those to you. Okay, we can take a look. Um, 
Any information on temporary docks yeah. and when they go out and how many at Smugglers? Sure. Um, so we have temporary or seasonal docks at on either side of the boat ramp. Um, I mean, there's probably if you if you're counting sections. I, I think there's two sections on each side and, and a ramp, but um, essentially there's a there's a convenience dock on each side at the ramp. So uh, when people are launching and recovering their boats, if those go in, you know, about this time of the year, prior to May 1st, and they come out like after Columbus Day sometime. Okay. There's also there's also a uh, ADA map that goes in at Smugglers. It, it's in poor shape. It needs you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Nate. Hey, good morning. Happy Can Friday. those are all stored on site in the parking lot? I don't know, but I can find out from. Um, well, they ran. I saw we saw the convenience docks stored there. I just want to make sure those that's everything, right? That you uh, that you install, Bill? Um, yes. Yep. The, everything else is like permanent. The fish pier is permanent. Okay. Are there more trash cans that are put out here during the summer? Uh, I'm sure there are. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine that would be parks. But... Yeah. How come we don't have parks on this no. group? I don't know if that's possible. To get Kevin to come? I think it would be great. Yeah. If, you know, for someone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that. I was kind of hoping that you know engineering would kind of be the liaison. Yeah. Yeah. Parks. Right. So maybe maybe Nate, you can check about the trash cans. I know there's more trash cans that go out. There's never an issue of not having enough. They trash store cans. them up at DPW and right. some at Flash that so they, yeah. you know, keep probably yeah. seasonal. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, is any field and court programming at Yarmouth Port Playground? No, no, no. And at the sailing center, are there any ADA maps that are put out? No. Um, not that I know of there. Um, there hopefully, we're going to get two more at, at town meeting, but not yet. Okay. Um, and then we had a couple of notes on programming here. We had sailing classes in season uh, twice a day. Um, can you confirm any additional programming about this place? Um, the only other group that's there is the DY High School. So they use the sailing center in um, our boats. And then they started, okay. they start early March. And I think they finish up right around what, May March, May. Memorial Day. So um, okay. that's the only two groups that use it. Okay. And Bill, um, the question about temporary seasonal docks raised the, it wasn't, it's not noted in here, but there are other locations that have temporary seasonal docks, yeah. like you know, the sailing center had some stored there. And then uh, Gray's Beach, they have, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. I don't, so, I don't um, remember those being stored, but maybe I'm, it's just been a while. Yep. What can you share the situation on those or any others we're missing? Yep. yep. So um, there's four municipal marinas that that the town has that the town manages through my division. Packet landing stays in year round. We only haul them to inspect them or for repairs. But Englewood Beach is what you're talking about at the sailing center. Um, those are stored in the parking lot in the in the winter. We just put them back in this week. Um, same with Bass Hole. Those um, come in and out every year. They're stored on site. Um, and then Colonial Acres Marina, which is at the mouth of Mill Creek or at the end of Standish Ave by car. 
same thing stored on site in the off season. Uh, and they all that that same time frame, you know, they'll be put back in before May one and and removed sometime after Columbus Day for all of the seasonal docks. Um, there's also docks that get removed at the Wilbur Park boat ramp on Bass River, which is right under the High Bank Bridge. So, so they get removed and stored in the parking lot seasonally as well? Yeah. Yes. And Lauren, Gray's Beach is Bass Hole. It's just the same. Great. Thanks, Bill. Yep. The only other thing on, at Flax Pond, we do put out a seasonal dock um, that is basically just used for like summer camp and stuff, but people will use it um, when they visit on the weekends or after camp hours. Um, and that we remove each, usually around Columbus Day, and stored uh, down at Flax, pretty close to water, so we don't have to lug it too far. Sorry, where did you say it was stored? Uh, right on site. At, at on Park. site. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. We will incorporate all this into uh, the site assessments. I think maybe some people had some comments on the specific site assessments too, in addition. Okay. Um, We'll go around the table. Ellie, do you have any comments? I didn't really have much time to, to do this. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Anthony, do you have any comments? Um, I I think just the, um, the capital assessment plan that's being done on all the playgrounds yeah. and parks and stuff right now. So some of the stuff is like um in flux. <laughs> yeah, in flux <laughs> and master plans may need to be right. um changed or added on to or so what like that, so. yeah, yeah. A little bit yeah. we have an action yeah. item obviously to complete that recreational assessment yes. capital assessment and then also to up, mm -hmm. update the master plans for flax sandy pond and peter yeah. hall yeah. so i think a lot of these things that have been identified we know their issues right. to a certain right. extent right. and we we know that we need mm -hmm. to be working on these these three particular parks right. but, but that's a good point yeah um yeah, the only question I have is, uh, are there any um, areas in the town where people, uh, those that have disabilities can go and swim? I know Sandy Pond is, I looked at that, that's you know, what we think there. So um, I'm running, I know Flax Pond seems to be maybe possible, but because of it being used all the time, you know, the um, daytime, 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 feasible unless we could like maybe designate an area for anyone that wants to use it that has you know disabilities so give them a chance because um, you can't go to the water yeah. you can't go to the beach so during the camp hours we don't let um we don't let anyone in the park so like a family showed up to like go swimming we don't let them come swimming because we have like our camp and stuff going on there so i'm not sure if we'd be able to like have a dedicated area there during like those hours, but um, like on the weekends and stuff, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure. And the weekends they could use it. Yeah. yeah. It's just, we don't want anyone I in know, there. but if you were yeah. thinking, you know, like as, as a person who doesn't have a disability, yeah. right? Yeah. You can go anytime you want, yeah. but any yeah. else, they yeah. can't. So I'm really pushing for something like that so that they can use it. Right. So what about off the, uh, at Long Pond off? Is it Mercury Drive? What's what's Wings that? Grove? Wings Grove. That Wings Grove. That oh, that's a steep, steep one. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's so the, I was just gonna chime in there. Um, I got a call and a follow up email about that. Um, the access to at Wings Grove Beach, and um, anyway, long story short, I'm gonna look into seeing if um, I can get some funding to to make better access there, possibly even handicap accessible through the state. Um, so that that's like a brand new project that just came on my plate, like as of yesterday. Thank you. What about Dennis, what about Dennis Pond? I know it's, 
it's restricted in some odd way. Right. Um, it's only parents and children, mm -hmm. no grandparents. So if you don't have a child with you. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm wondering though, is it hand? I think that's probably the beach, but how you, there's no Moby mats that get you to the water, right? You no. would need a Moby mat. I'm just trying to think about which ones that we have now that could be more readily adapted to allowing the people. The beach off of Lemon Lane on the pond is, is nice and flat, but you would need a Moby. My Okay. Oh, with Davis. Good. Davis. Well, not Davis. It's the next one over Lemon Lane. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's right off of Lemon Lane. It's you, There's hardly any parking. Yeah. And you, it's easy access to the water. What's the name of it? There is no name. It's just the beach at the end of Lemon Lane. Lemon it's, pond. it's basically the kind of like an extension of the right of way that right. goes to the pond. Exactly. It provides water access, and there's a little beach there. Yeah. Um, and there's there's a bench, but that's yeah. that might be more. Well, I'm thinking readily. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. There's, there's no there's formal something we can advertise that. Yeah. I'm gonna, uh, Ellie. I'll get back to you on that. So I can, we're really yeah. getting that involved. Yeah, I'm not sure about the parking either. I mean, there's yeah, no handicap parking just, and it's just really at the end. So okay, okay, that becomes perfect. an issue. Yeah, Although the grades good. are really good, I think, for getting access exactly, in. Exactly. So it could be dropped off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then that person could be, you know, right. there. That would be nice. Yeah. It's right here off of Town Hall. Just down here. Okay. Do we have any comments? I didn't have a chance to look. Okay. All right, I've got a, I have a few on um, Baxter Gristmill. where well, you're talking about sign. The parking area is so distanced from where the mill is. I don't think a lot of people think they can park there and then they, you know, they can walk over. What we need is a, a sign that says Baxter, mill, Baxter Gristmill Parking. Yep. Let people know, yep. you know, that was part of the agreement with the nursing home, yes. you know, that that parking area would be there. Yep. I think that would be very helpful besides the historical, you know, information. Um, on Flex Pond, uh, the front page on the bottom, it says there is a retirement community across the street. It's across the pond. Yeah, got that right. And it's a lodge, not a lounge. Oh, <laughs> <I didn't know. laughs> a lounge might be nice, but it's for the kids. So. <laughs> okay. Um, on the Gray's Beach uh, comments, um, the second page on the top, it says, These are, there are clear trails that make a short loop from the entrance. It, it's not a short loop. This loop connects with the entire calorie darling. Right. conservation trails and that's several miles long so it's only really the beginning of calorie darling that's uh open grace beach so maybe just take out the word short right just that that loop goes all the way sure. that loop goes all the way around yeah um let's see packet landing on the bottom of the second page between, you're assuming there is a gas, a sewer for restaurants. Yeah. There are no sewers in Yarmouth yet. Yeah. There's a septic yeah. system for so the pavilion. Yeah. So that should be septic, not sewer. And there's no there's no gas to the building. No. No. Oh. Right. There's that. So there's an on-site septic. Right. I believe two septics. I believe there's one for the bathhouses, and um, and then we have our marine pump out station there. I believe we have a separate tank. That's just a tank, though. Yeah, it's not a septic a system. Yeah. So you have a uh, marine pump out tank. Right. Well, but it, it we have a uh, pump out station, and it, um, it leads to an underground tank that we get pumped out by a septic hall or so. Right. Yeah. It's not connected to the to a. It's leech not connected system. to the bathrooms. Yes. There's a yeah. separate septic system for the yeah. bathrooms. Right. Perfect. Yeah. Um, now we go on to the goals. Uh, oh, no, we're not. Can we just finish with the site assessment first? Oh, okay. I'm finished with the site I just assessment. had a couple comments so and then we can move right on. Right. Um, so I have the same comment on the flax pond about the lodge and the, across the pond. Um, <laughs> for for Gray's Beach, it's a minor thing, but you talk about um, 
hole holes need to be filled. I'm assuming there's some potholes that need to be filled. It's a minor thing, but when you're looking at it, yeah, just clarify that. Um, I, I did have a question on packet landing for Bill. Um, one of the other context notes, it says the dock closest to the bridge has an upweller for shellfish fishing. Yeah, uh, Is that true? Yeah. Yes, we awesome. we grow shellfish there. But that's one of our three upweller systems in town. Where's the third one? I know there's one at driving uh, site. At, in Lewis Bay, at um, in the private cove that we lease for our patrol boats in Lewis Bay, Henderson's Cove, we call it. Oh. It's right at the end of South Sea Ave. Oh, interesting. I did not know that. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, Got them marked here. Um, um, the Peter, Peter Homer Park, um, you say it's next to the landfill. I would just call it the transfer station. Um, there is an old abandoned, uh, not properly capped uh, landfill that's underneath the, the nine hole course, but that's actually just the transfer station. So if you could just put that throughout that one, that would be good. Um, I want people to think we have an active landfill in the town of Yarmouth. Yeah, we, got it. <laughs> we have a playground right next to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good for them. Um, oh, and Smugglers Beach. Um, you just had noted that there is a speakeasy down the street. I would just say there was a speakeasy down the street. <laughs> Again, that would be fun, but. A historical. <laughs> a historical. Yeah. And that's going to be, that was that's purchased. Be and be, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then I don't know did, if um, Christine mentioned it on the Yarmouth Port Playground. Um, oh, the, the, yeah, the, the adding of the second loop and restriping the basketball court that used to have two um, courts in it, but what they were finding the neighbors were complaining because older kids were playing late into the night. So they ended up making it a half court so that younger kids could practice hoops and stuff. So we don't, we wouldn't want to go back to what we had before. So maybe just taking that out. Thank you. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. Uh, on the goals, are you got, who's going to initiate the goals discussion? Um, I, I can certainly go, go over that. Maybe we can pull, pull it up. Yeah. Cassie? Yeah, I'm going to take over screen sharing. Yeah, I know Lauren had to leave at a certain Lauren. time. So thank you, Lauren. I just, in a silly way, just closed out. So I will be moment momentarily opening it. Oh, sure. Um, if you want to get started with comments, I'll just do it. A, a lot of this just got re reordered from the what we had to identified as high to low. Obviously, the second survey will give us even more information, but this kind of just was was kind of a start. Um, and then um, there's a great idea for Weston and Samson to start mo um, identifying them as object 1A, action item 1A-1, 1A-2, so that we it's further in your packet, Gail, um, so that we can um, more readily identify what we're talking about. I'm not so sure whether we need to do the maintain the list of open space parcels and identify. I think that's kind of known already. Um, so if we wanted to, if we were thinking of eliminating any ones, I think we could probably um, eliminate that one. Um, but that's up for discussion. So the invasive species, we're just gonna continue to um, pursue grant funding. And those some okay, and some funding sources were put in there: the CPA and then the Wetland Fund that the Conservation Commission, uh, I think, oversees. Um, continuing the development of the public education, and then investigating and monitor other activities, um, sites that might have um, invasive species. Um, one question I did have for the one C dash one for Bill was: um, we're still doing the prescribed burns and the mechanical removal of the vegetation. Um, not. I mean, I hope to one day, but right now we are not because there's nobody who does that work anymore. So there was a sole source vendor that that we would contract out to. Um, they actually 
the technical term, believe it or not, is a burn boss. So uh, you needed to hire a burn boss to manage the burn. And um, there, there's basically, he took a job working up at the, at Otis burning just for them. Um, so right now I don't have a, you know, we, we still may do some mechanical clearing in there and maybe in the future, um, if we can get somebody to, to run burns in there, we would. So I don't want to take it out, but okay. right now we're on a pause. What, what other uh, funding sources might there be for that? Would town staff do the mechanical removal themselves? Well, or? Uh, well no, I can get funding through the state um, and potentially the county um, if they start up that program again. Um, can, you, can you send us the exact specifics about it so we can add that in as an option in the funding source? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they would cover mechanical removal as well. It doesn't have to be, you know, prescribed burns. Yeah. Yep. Brewster had a prescribed burn last week. I don't know if you need any information on who they used. Or not. Yeah, I think they. There's like a guy, Dave Cleary, that works for the National Seashore, and sometimes towns are able to. Um, kind of work something out with him. Um, it's just um. It, it's just difficult. I, I don't have a private contractor that I can hire out. Um, but again, that's why I say I leave it on there because there, you know, right now it's the burn part of that program has not been active, but, um, it's not to say that we won't do burns again. So, so just before we leave this, get done the, the first one, one, a dash one, when I started looking at the public, um, land matrix, it kind of identifies who's responsible for it. So I kind of feel like we have that one already and maybe we could eliminate it. I think well, most I gave you that whole list you know, from the conservation trust even. You know? Right, right. But yeah, this is town owned. But yes, yep. It'll be part of the the things. Thoughts. Crickets, should we leave it in? <laughs> Wait. Wait, that, say that again. Um the, the one. 1A-1, maintaining a list of the open space parcels and identify which town parcel committees or organizations are currently responsible for maintenance. I think that that kind of ends up getting done as part of the um, the public land matrix that that I'm, I'm working. I think it's helpful yeah. to read in okay. bec because Sorry. it tells you whether or not things have conservation easements on it or do they have oh, it, um, it's recreational in there. easements. That's all going to be in the yeah. plan. Okay. This is just, do we need an action item that says something that's already going to be in the plan? Oh, if it's done, I guess it's not an action item if it's completed. It's right. plan. I think it's, I think essentially, unless I'm missing something, maybe yeah. Cassie, about what, I mean, we have that whole matrix that I'm looking at updating and adding some new parcels to that we've purchased since then. Uh, but it clearly identifies that the, you know, what department it's under, and then also whether it has a restriction or is protected or not. Yeah, I think that's fair if, if it's a clear delineation of who is maintaining and, and funding. There are some communities where even if it's owned by that department, someone else does maintenance, like the, the it's a little bit, um, there's a little bit of a gray zone between who's paying for things. So if that's, if that's clear in Yarmouth, then it's fine to eliminate it as an action item. I'd, I'd like to think that everyone, every yeah. department knows what they're responsible <laughs> for. Like and if that. something starts getting shabby, people say, who's who's doing that? And that's when we, they then formally may get assigned to someone or or reconfirm that it's assigned to them. So I just, I'm thinking that we got quite a long list here that maybe there's some things that we could like, sure. cut back on. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think right now we're in good shape with, it, it wasn't always that way. <laughs> we, right, right. There was in the past some gray area, you know, a lot of finger pointing. They do that. But but I, I think right now I would agree with Kathy. I think now that Parks is under DPW, DPW has a firm grasp of all their different uh, avenues of what they have to do. So versus when it was under Parks and Rec, which right. was, you know, a little bit different. Yeah, getting right. confusing. Yeah, very right. confusing. Um, we just added in the address, investigate and address illegal dumping and encroachment issues. So we modified that a little bit from town staff. 
Um, again, it continue to install the signage um, and also notify the simultaneous activities. This is kind of where we also indicated um, notification of areas open for hunting and at what times of year. I'm assuming that that's that's okay with you, Bill. Yeah, you're kind of doing that anyway. Yeah, yeah, okay. good to have in there. Like I said, we've been doing it, and um, and you know we 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 plan on continuing and and maybe even. Um, trying to do it more effectively. Uh, like I said, there's there's been some, like I think I might have explained in one of the other meetings, there's been some issues where the fact that we've done it has caused confusion based on where we've had to put the sign. So, right. But right. we we intend it, it. It's more benefit than not to do it, and we intend on continuing to do it and and probably tweaking it to make it more comprehensive sounds great yeah. um, so you guys have installed some safety blazes and markers and we're going to continue doing that basically keeping people on the trail so they're not trudging and damaging uh, their areas and then um, one d-4 bill is that the evaluate town-owned lands currently open for hunting and assess whether any modifications need to be made take into consideration changes in use such as the extension of the cape cod rail trail and location of the wastewater treatment facility off buck island road and modify maps as needed and publicized is that something you're comfortable with? Because I think that's going to really fall more on you. Yeah, that's something Brittany did, and I agreed to it. Or <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, huh. I, I think we I, should leave it in because 2013 yeah. is the last time that map was done, and the map had a. I mean, I realize that it's it's it will probably be a somewhat of a contentious issue. Because there's going yeah. to be hunters who don't want to to lose spaces, and then there's going to be walkers who want to feel comfortable walking. Um, but I think I it's worth have the bike trail going through it. Yeah. I, I just think it, enough has changed, and we've we've kind of encroached more, so to speak, into the conservation areas with different things that it might be good to have um, this yeah, looked at again. I won't I won't fight you on it. I, that's, <laughs> I, yeah, I understand. <laughs> I have my own reservations, but I I, I understand the need to have it yeah. updated, and I think the evaluation process is where you know we'll get into the weeds with it all and right um but I, I i agree it needs to be in there yeah and evaluate it you may say no you know we're going to keep with what we have i mean that's yeah. the answer too but yeah i just feel like it's been a while since um yeah. since that, that's been done um so expanding our amount of open space and conservation lands. Um, I did add in for the, uh, looking at the annual list, I added in um, uh, open space committee members taking a look at that and also identified um, them as being um, some of the funding. So town staff and committee, same with um, the one for looking at other properties to preserve these different uh, areas. Um, also investigating that another NSTAR property um, to, to be able to purchase the NSTAR property. Uh, and then pursuing different acquisitions. Um, so added some additional funding sources and then, and then the committees there with a the change. Did you? Okay. Um, promoting the stormwater treatment on the 10 new stormwater projects. I added some a different additional funding sources that Nate gave me. Um, and then of course, in the end, we also have a list of the what these initials mean with regard to the funding source. Um, same thing with the um, continuing to explore water quality improvement with the wastewater uh, program. I added in a bunch of funding sources that um, that are going to be paying for that phase one. Um, I did add that what's highlighted in yellow there is I did add the uh, Cape Cod Commission Freshwater Initiative um, that we've mentioned as another way of looking at not just uh, salt water but also freshwater uh, water quality and nutrient levels there. Um, and then just reorder ordered that a little bit and have still have the long pond study in there and it's already been funded. Yeah. Um, title restoration um, didn't really change anything. I think I just put in the different funding sources uh, for that. Um, did you have any idea, Bill? For the, I think I sent you an email about um, whether run pond title restoration, whether there was like any other funding sources besides capital or maybe CPA. I mean, I think Army Corps had been involved at one point. Yeah. So that, yes, the Army Corps through a wetlands restoration grant had committed, um, you know, to pay, a, I, I don't remember the exact percentage off the top of my head, but it, I mean, 75%. We could high. never, yeah, we could 75%. <laughs> 
but of like a multi-million dollar project. So it was nothing that we were ever going to be able to get through capital. Like we're going to need to find grants to, uh, you know, additional grants to, to match the Army Corps grant. Um, I just, we'll never get that through capital. But I am, have been working with Amanda on the low-lying roads thing and, and there is some work on it. Um, that's going to take place in Run Pond. I, I just don't, and I'm looking to see if there's a way to tie it all together. Um, but it, it won't be to the extent that Carl had proposed the, the whole wetlands restoration project. Uh, right. But so that's what that is. Army Corps was, it, I would put down for funding on that though. Okay. Would NRCS be, be possible? I mean, they do wetland restoration too, right? Yep. Um, I don't know. I can talk to Don Lipak. We're working with him on a few other things. I'm yeah, sure Carl had talked to him in the past, but um, but yeah, I I will look into that. They've been very generous to the town of Yarmouth, so yeah, she's been very lucky with them. Um, so so moving on, um, I think this is the one that a comment that um. Christine had about the Friends of Bass River. I think it needs to be clarified a little bit. What, what were your suggestions about, about um, that? The what, what you're stating here is the restoration of the retired cranberry bogs. They're not restoring the cranberry bogs. They're restoring the, they're taking out the dams and they're restoring the wetlands, which would be the headwaters of a herring run. This 150 years ago, this was the number two herring run in the state. So by taking out you know, the dams that created the cranberry bogs, they're going to restore this herring run. So uh, somehow we have to say rest restoration of the retired cranberry bogs area right. back to wetlands, which are the headwaters of the herring run, something like that. You know? well, maybe it's restoration of the wetlands right. from the retired. Yes. Okay, good. Or restoration yeah. of the retired cranberry box to wetlands, natural wetlands. Right, yeah. there you go. Yeah, yep. natural, that's good. It's the uh, so application Christine. said re returning them to the original state as wetlands. Natural wetlands. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so construct. That? I'm sorry, construct the restoration of the retired cranberry box to natural wetlands at the headwaters of the Bass River. Right, perfect. The natural wetlands. And now, uh, so the that natural. means that herring yeah. will be flowing through. Yes. So that's very, very very important. Thing. Yes, yeah, we get them the river. Falmouth, Falmouth did this a couple of years ago. You talk about the seal. I'm thinking about, you know, I mean, that is really powerful because of people that are fishers. I mean, I don't fish, but I'm mean, yeah. fishing and stuff. Oh, yeah. sure. sure. Yeah. Falmouth did this, and in the first year, the herring came in. Wow. It was amazing. And if you're hungry, enjoy that. They know they, they want to go back. Yeah. Well, um, the, the herring is, and, and, I, and I, I think also, that the state will stock um, herring up there, you know, once that is complete. But but the herring run component is, it's an important component. It, it's one that actually can generate a lot of funding sources. But um, the, the, the other big thing that the Friends of Bass River is pushing is the biggest thing is nitrogen attenuation. So by restoring that wetland and, um, and, and making it so it's not just these linear dikes uh, like it was you know, when it was the yeah. utilized for the cranberry yeah. bog. Um, Widening the culvert, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it's gonna be more of a serpentine type of a, of a creek that goes through a natural wetland and it's gonna attenuate more nitrogen. I mean, that, that's probably the yeah, biggest thing that Friends of yeah. Bass River is concerned about. So you're just removing the dams that are blocking the herring from getting up there. There's no need for like a herring run or anything like that, like at Baxter. It will end up being that way. Well, I mean, like I say, it, it's very likely that we can get the state to, to stock herring up there um, like we just did at Sandy Pond. Um, <coughs> because the just... herring returned to where they were spawned like, like three to five years from when they were spawned. So... Like with Sandy Pond, we haven't had fish that have been able to get all the way up there, you know, for years that's been blocked and they've spawned right behind the backs of grist mill. But when we did that project recently, part of the deal was we would we would open up the creek between Baxter grist mill and Little Sandy Pond um, and, and then the state would come in and stock. 
So they did last spring with pre-spawn fish that came from a, a donor run in Mashpee. Um, but it had, a, it had to be after we had cleared the stream and, and we knew that they could navigate through the stream. Um, so cool. we should start to yeah, see yeah. return and they're gonna continue to stock for the next few years. And, and then hopefully we start to see, you know, fish that respond in Little Sandy return on their own. Yeah, it takes a couple of years. Yeah. yeah. So you basically, this project will return the herring run. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. That's that's great news, Bill. And this, this uh, clarification would also go to question 12 of the new survey. Yeah. Yeah. Any changes we make here would be correspondingly made, made to the survey. Um, so continue identifying future wetland restoration projects as, as we can. Um, Looking for educational tools, Brittany identified the great tools there that didn't change. Um, further protection of wetland resources or so identification and regulation. We clarified that the vernal pool certifications will happen each spring. They were out there yesterday, so they're, they're, out, there they're, right they're out there. Yeah, they're working on it, um, and then they are still work. You know, they're working on updating the Yarmouth wetland regulations, so that continues going on. Um, Bill, with regard to three G dash one, identify and prioritize critical areas in need of dredging for water quality and recreation on town land. Investigate and pursue funding. What's the status of dredging in town? I just feel like I haven't, as we've been a little bit behind or is it the dredge is broken or what's going on? Um, so we did some dredging um, last spring at the mouth of Parker's River. We did additional dredging in November um, at the entrance to Parker's River, all through emergency permits that I had to get because the 10 year comprehensive dredge permits that that the Army Corps wanted all the towns to, to start getting about 12 years ago when Carl got the first one um, has become very problematic in renewing. So Carl started to try to renew our permit before he left and um, it's still not renewed. In, in fact, um, I was on a meeting with the Army Corps and the consultants yesterday and uh, I, I think we're getting close but it's become a nightmare. I mean, to, there's no other way to put it. Uh, it's just, there's so many different agencies, regulatory agencies that have to review it and it's um, become next to impossible to meet all the criteria. It's, it's, it's getting more and more restrictive, but, um, but it was an encouraging meeting yesterday. They're, they, they recognize that and they're trying to work with us. Um, so we have done dredging this year just based on emergencies and um and the 10 year permit hopefully should be renewed very soon um, for parker's river just for parker's river no no, no all, all of the areas that we've always dredged oh awesome uh, yep lewis bay parker's river bass river oh there's great. um there's a whole nother issue going on with the very upper reaches of bass river um and and there was like a verbal agreement that the town of Dennis would dredge the upper parts of Bass River. Yeah. I mean, would, I'm sorry, would permit the upper parts of Bass yeah. River because we've permitted the Southern part and then we've split the cost of dredging. Um, they've run into some legal problems with dredging, with permitting the upper part of Bass River. Um, and um, there's some stuff that is under an adjudicative review with a homeowners association that abuts one of their areas. Uh, and that's that stalled the permitting process for the upper part of Bass River, which has never been dredged. But oh, um, never. Yeah. No, it's it's pretty. So, so um, is this where you use the county dredge or do we have like yeah. a. Yeah. yeah. Did they, did they get an additional dredge or did they get a small scale dredge? I thought they've, I heard got, like... they've got an additional dredge now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I was just curious because I, I hear about it a lot and I just, I know that those 10 year permits are bare. So it sounds like I was right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry to hear that, but I'm glad to hear you had an encouraging meeting. So that's always yeah. good. <laughs> Um, so the next page is, you know, address the impacts of climate change, and that's where we have the low-lying road study that Bill was talking about and the MVP grant that he was talking about, uh, and then when uh, Brittany wanted to be sure that when we're looking at future uh, wetland changes that we're really looking at this particular model that really kind of 
addresses sea level rise and, and climate change. Mm -hmm. um, three, 3i, that used to be a separate goal and we kind of uh, combined it with this particular goal and I kind of modified it a little bit there just so it kind of made some sense that we're concentrating development in suitable areas to preserve meaningful open space, promote infill and redevelopment over greenfield development and preserve natural vegetation. So that basically stayed the same. It just got incorporated under goal um, number three. And then of course, goal five became goal number four. Uh, I did expand a little bit on that first objective to say completion of projects or studies currently under development and or funded. Because we have a lot of stuff that, as you can tell, when you look through here, that's already in the books, already funded, and we're kind of moving forward with them. So um, none of this really changed. It just got moved around a little bit. There was a couple of items um, that got moved from different objectives around, but we're still in Duke completing all of our um, projects. Those are all high. Uh, and then we're looking at um, evaluating, looking into complete streets. Um, we do have this investigate the need for and ways to create additional year-round indoor recreation facilities using public-private partnerships and 4A11, but we have no funding next to that. Is there any funding for, for that? Or would that just... I'm not really sure what this would entail. And I know, Steve, this is something. I mean, initially it could just be town staff investigating it as part of, the, you know, like different things like we're investigating uh, it as an item now in our open space and rec plan. I just, we have to put something in there. <laughs> um, there must be grant funding for that kind of stuff. I mean. We're just investigating it. So, yeah. um, I mean, it's pro probably somewhat, yeah. I mean, we Could can we leave put it as investigating yeah. funding so, too. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's that? Could we put investigating the need and then subsequently, if there's a need, investigating grant funding or would it just be capital stuff? Well, this, I think this is, there is a need. It's just a question of where we get the funding from. I mean, <clears throat> what we do now to get more programs um, from private partnership is we just create vendor contracts with different organizations that are both public and private, and they will run programs for us. Um, Can you give an example? Facilities. Like so, the pools or something? So we do, oh yeah, I mean, we have you know, probably 80% of our programs are done through vendors that we use that are outside of, um, that aren't run by the town, like me or anyone in the rec department. So one example would be, we did an April vacation camp um, uh, at Flax Pond, which was a mad science camp. So mad science is the name of the company and they run a program. So that's how we traditionally expand our recreational uh, programs um just it, due to the staff and it, it's staff coordinating them but the the, yes. the actual cost for the mad science that's paid for by the by the, by the people who attend okay yeah so and then there's usually a split whether it's you know we get we charge say for, we charge a hundred dollars you guys got to keep uh 25 or we charge 100 and then whatever you want to charge on top of that you keep you know so okay. that's that's really how we expand our programs um and I know that there's some people who like use the indoor pools at some of the motels. Is so that a program? That. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's a yeah, we work with um, a hotel that we do our water, water aerobics class with um, and our youth swim classes. So I guess maybe investigating part more partnerships. I mean, I don't know. Uh... I, 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 it's interesting because when I read that, I wasn't really clear on what it might mean, but I think right. that is fabulous yeah i that, mean that's a lot that, of the programming that, that we do how do you phrase it um i think i think it's it's i, I actually feel funny would be out would be outside, outside. Out would be um pay. fees yeah the funding yeah. would be town staff coordinating and then fees, fees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh that's great that's yeah. that's great. That's why I was glad. I mean, and we also have in here, you know, the giant list and we can talk <laughs> about that, which was great. You know, I don't really know about all the great things that's happening in that's recreation. Right. So um, I think expanding use of existing facilities. Um, I think I ended up moving over um, the inventory or what did I move over? No, nothing here. I think this was all pretty much the same. 
um, it might have been no, I didn't even, move something. I yeah, I moved it over to maintaining and upgrading the facilities. That's where it was. Um, updating the yeah. So when you get to um, objective four C, that's where we've got the recreation capital assessment improvement plan that got moved over. Um, I've also ordered this from high to medium. So the pickleball court uh, court prioritization at Sandy Pond got put in there. Yeah. Um, we have the master plan update in there. We have adding signage um, at trails and, and wayfinding, which is all something I think we all agree need on. Everything that's kind of highlighted in yellow are kind of like, how do we upgrade our facilities for um, you know, handicap accessibility. And I think we need to finish some of the assessments. I'm gonna try and go with the building commissioner into the buildings um, to see if we can take a look. I know some of the buildings, like for example, the packet landing restrooms, those were just constructed and they were approved yeah. and they were inspected at that particular time and they're fully compliant. Um, but there's some other places that we need to go in and just check what was done in 2018, make sure that that's still all, all accurate and, and that type of thing. So those are highlighted in yellow because I think we might need to fix and modify those based on that, that final assessment. And I think now that we have the site assessment, we might be able to start that transition plan, mm -hmm. Cassie, at least for the stuff that you know of, um, and, and we can start thinking about that because we need to kind of finalize this before we can finalize the survey right. because we want to ask questions about it. So that's why that's highlighted in yellow. Those are just kind of key carryovers, but I'm not sure that they would actually stay. Um, the next one has to do with shell fishing, and I had, I guess, some questions for, for Bill. Um, it sounds like you want to, we, we want to continue uh, and or increase purchase of seed stock for shell fish replenishment. Yep. Um, how is that funded? So um, it's, a lot of it is funded through our well, multiple. It's funded through our operating budget. It's funded um, sometimes through special articles. Right now, I have an article that um, that Carl had gotten in, through at last spring's town meeting. Um, the county um, funds a good portion of our seed that we grow in our uh, upwellers. So, like all of Can those you... things, county county grants capital articles and our we have a propagation budget in our operating budget um so so, so what is it funding, in, yep what's the county what is, <laughs> is that the extension i mean what it, what is that when you say county funds for seed yeah i think it's i think it is through the cooperative extension the right <laughs> right now our shellfish constable actually um has been out on uh, medical leave of absence, but just announced his retirement. So uh, uh, we're going to be hiring a new shellfish constable. It, the posting might go up as early as today. <laughs> so um, never ending. Be a little bit learning curve with whoever we get in, but also a potential for um, you know some new programs and and expanding our programs. Okay. Um. I took out the second one there is really related to stormwater, I think, because we're talking in another goal about water quality in general. And we talk about stormwater improvements um, there. It seemed a little bit redundant mm -hmm. here. Um, and then just explore the need for impossible locations for additional town shellfish upwellers. Is that something that you? Yeah. Is that good? Um, yes, I would leave that in there. Okay. Perfect. Um, and then four has had to do with um, the programming. Um, and I guess this is the question a little bit for Cassie. Um, the, what's in there in yellow is I just identified um, completion of the Riverwalk Park and solicit periodic special events for the site. I don't know if you want me to give examples. Could you? That was the whole key, I think, that came out last time. You need, did you need examples of things? Because Anthony has a great list of uh, in the packet of existing programs as well as um, some great future programming. And if we needed to be more specific, I think we could probably add something. I don't think it has to be in here. I think it just gets written into the report. Oh, perfect. Okay. All right. So you think we're good with kind of what we have here and this level? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. This is fine to me. Okay. So I don't know if anybody had any. So, so you have that list from Anthony that you can incorporate into the program. And the last thing is that we did have, um, last time we met, there were some comments on the summary from the first survey and it's been incorporated into this um, little one pager. 
uh, here. So if everyone's good uh, good with that, we can get rid of the draft and that can just be um, the time inversion. <laughs> Oh, good. Okay, do we have any other? No, it would be okay. Oh, that's okay. Go ahead. I guess we've gone two minutes. Are we are we finished? No, we have the um the questionnaire. The questionnaire. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think we had <laughs> talked about, you know, I think probably we'll get more input from a lot more people if we go with a survey versus trying to have an actual in-person meeting. Mm -hmm. And what we really want to say is, I think we, we've heard a lot of information. We've kind of coalesced it. And we've identified our goals, our objectives, and our action items. And now we really want to vet those specific things um, with the public. So it's a slightly long survey, um, but uh, I think it, it kind of it kind of gets us the it the input that we're actually looking for. Are we on the right track with these action items that we have right. identified and do you find them important or not? Um, and that might also help us prioritize them if it's something that, you know, maybe something's high priority for, for a lot of people, we'll move it up. If it's less, <laughs> maybe we move it down, that type of thing. Um, I don't know whether the only thing at suggestion is, or not suggestion, but question I have is, do we want to try and um, summarize the action items a little bit tighter um or, or do we want to leave them kind of exactly as we're th we we had them in our in our goals unfortunately the way this does um prints out in the hard copy it kind of makes that column very small yeah, does, yeah. um but the can you know, survey monkey isn't always the user friendly and it's really hard to make that i think when you're and maybe cassie can uh input i think when you're looking at it the question would be a little bit bigger than than you see it in the printout in the actual survey online survey monkey yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, so for in the intro, we were suggesting including a link to the draft goals and this whole list that we were just looking at, like that somebody can click to, but they wouldn't necessarily have that in a hard copy. So if we were to shorten it, I just, I guess I worry about, I mean, I guess, Kathy, you could have the draft goals printed as well, like as a, a attachment to the back of this in a printed form. I, I don't mind leaving it the way it is. It was just a question um, of whether it's gonna to be too long for people, that's all. I think if you start truncating it, then you're putting a little personal twist on something that may yeah. miss a new one, you know? I don't, I don't wanna, I'd rather just like stick to the language so that Perfect. people can come on, on it. Okay. Yeah, and unfortunately the survey monkey is like a pre-formatted, question that we just fill the blanks into. So it's hard to format the columns. Um, we're hoping that we're just up against timing on the project as a whole to get the draft out by the end of June. Um, the goal is to get it out so that we can have the opportunity to seek funding. So we really would like to get the survey out and give people a you know, typically we want to give them at least four weeks. Um, and so we're just up against timing to be able to, we're in middle of April, likely before we'll get this out. And then that leaves us to mid-May. And then we have about a month to get the draft um, out the door and we'll be working in the background. I just wanted to flag that as a, you know, we really would like to get this out as soon as possible. I think the only issue is um, we don't have the ADA questions. I mean, we just got the site assessments. Um, so I don't know whether there's going to be certain things that we want to highlight. I mean, there's a transition plan that identifies all of the issues, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're like taking action immediately on, on all of these things. Um, but I, I was hoping to go out um, this Wednesday, if I can get the keys with the building commissioner to go into the different buildings. I don't think it's going to take very long, and I don't think we're going to find any surprises based on uh, the recent um, assessment that was just done in 2018. Um, but I think we need to finalize those, if, whether we want to do any ADA questions. So I think we need to finalize the transition plan, finalize any, any um, particular goals we might have on action items so that we can incorporate them into the survey. So I, as much as I totally respect your your the timeline that you're talking about, but I feel like maybe we need that one more meeting 
And the next meeting would be to, okay, here's the blessing on the survey. Let's get it out. Um, so will we be meeting next week? Should we just add an extra meeting? Will that give you time? If you I can't guarantee I can get the keys. I mean, I just sent out. A, um, it's too much. I can't breathe. I, I, just, um, I appreciate the offer to, to meet to meet more, but um, it probably wouldn't be until two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Um, so if we finalize the survey on the twenty first, yes, which I believe the next meeting. Yep, and we theoretically could get the survey out middle of the following week. Yep, that gives us three weeks to have the survey open. Kathy, do you think that's enough time? Um, we can still do extend it to four weeks and just be working in the background. I, just, I think we should uh, probably extend it to four weeks and just work in the background. Okay. So the survey would then close end of May, so like the 26th, yeah. plus or minus, which is fine. We'll just keep working working away in the background on the report. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the survey, the length of it. Yeah. It just... Maybe if they put the captions closer together on the top, you know, then the questions won't be so long. Mm -hmm. it's on. That's the goal too would be like survey, just to or do a on. landscape and then you you know you'll have more room for the topics. I think what you're yeah. essentially asking is these it would be like exactly like this. It's just unfortunately the survey might be in how it fills out, yeah. you end up having more pages. Um, so there are a lot of things because we're doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. I don't disagree. And that's that's why I was talking about do we want to truncate the, the language in, in any way? Um, but I don't. 23, well, it says 20, 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. How many hard copies were filled out in the last survey? Kathy? Three. <laughs> yeah. Three. So I guess I just don't want to lose sight of the fact that most folks are filling this out online where it is less cumbersome. Um, I don't, I just, yeah, I, I, I don't know if there's a lot of value in, in flushing this through for the very few people who will be filling it out hard copy. And we also need to translate this as well just to keep that in mind. We did get how many, like three in Portuguese? Like, yeah. yeah. I think handful. that came through the schools. Uh, the schools were really good to us. And the out little notices and stuff. So I think maybe, um, Cassie, for the next meeting, if you could take a look at the transition plan that's it, you know, in the 2015 and modify it based on, you know, what you saw from your assessments and then um, give that to me and I can add in stuff, you know, from our, our flight visits. And then maybe we'll have a transition plan to look at maybe some goals to talk about. We have to have some goals to talk about. I think a lot of the comments and a lot of the things that are gonna happen with regard to handicap accessibility are gonna be part of the master plan yeah, and completion right. of the master plan. Sandy Pond, yeah, the current restroom, not fully handicap accessible at all. We're gonna try and make some improvements, I think. I gotta to talk to Amanda about that. Yeah. Um, but that's gonna be replaced as part of as part of the master plan is to completely replace that restroom. So there's you know a lot of things like that. Um that that the buildings themselves or the restrooms themselves, the structures themselves are gonna be addressed in some way um, through that, through that master plan. So I think I thought Gail's comment was very interesting about where how did if you're handicapped accessible and you want to go swimming, where do you go in the town of Yarmouth? And I don't, I don't know. I literally don't know. Well, I mean, you can go to the beaches. But how do you get? I mean, you have to walk down steps. There's no ramp. You have to walk yeah. up. I mean, you have mats. The, the, so I know that the middle beach. I believe but, that their parks is planning on. Yeah. Well, I think they, they have the Moby maps at uh, Seagull. So we, we have the we have the Moby chairs yeah. as well, which you can. Where are they though? It's like so, we keep them in our in the lifeguard sheds. So, like at Bass River, we have a couple of Moby chairs. The Grace uh, Seagull Beach, we have Moby chairs. 
Gray's Beach is difficult because there's no store, there's hardly any storage yeah. on top of the equipment. That's so, not a bad spot. Do the people know to ask for them? Yeah, so I mean, probably <laughs> half a dozen times, maybe more. People will call, hey, we're going to the beach. Is there any way we can get a Moby chair? We tell them Seagull Beach has them um, or Bass River. Okay. The issue we run into is if we aren't guarding Seagull Beach because we don't have enough guards for that day, then we have to tell them you got to go to Bass River. They might not want to go, you know, you might not want to go that spot. Right. So you need a lifeguard in order to get them the most. So right now the practice is someone goes up to the gate to pay to get in. They go, oh, can we get a, a, a Moby chair for, you know, whoever? And the lifeguard will bring it up and they'll kind of help them um, uh, get in the chair and stuff like that. And usually they have multiple people with them yeah. obviously to help them yeah. push the chair and then we tell them by four o'clock we need the chair back because that's when our guards leave yeah. so it is a window of time where like we have the four chairs yeah. when yeah. they're available yeah. we're looking to replace and purchase new ones as well as the ones we have now are well used well seasoned we'll say that a lot of salt water going on them. so maybe is that is that a, you know one of the things that we should include in the transition plan is upgrade up um, getting new moby chairs I think so. I, I I think the plan, hopefully, is to get them sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, okay, great. I've been speaking with people about getting them. It's just they're pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. So I think we we're trying to get a replace a couple because we can use them now. But you know, they can also go in the water, too. So the chairs yeah, yeah. can go right down the beach, right into the water. I think Gail had a question. She had her hand up. <clears throat> oh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, um, I had received, well, we, I'm on the commission, we received a complaint about uh, the Moby chairs. Um, right. Once, ones they're not really uh, conducive to people um, because um, they're heavy and they cannot go to the water's edge. Yes, the Moby mats go a certain point and then it stops. And you have to be really, really strong, I guess. I don't know, I've never been in one or ever seen one, but you have to be really, really strong to push it through the sand to get yeah. to the water. Yeah. And, um, so it's really not very friendly. This it's it's not user friendly, not like um, other uh, towns in in uh, on the Cape where they can just go right at the water's edge without any problem, and they're on the mat. Um, I guess there's a beach. I don't remember the name of it, but it's uphill Judah Way or something. I guess Sudan Way. Yeah. yeah, I've never been there, but um, I was told that it's quite steep. So again, it's not very friendly, user friendly for those people that are struggling with great disabilities. And um, I find that it's, you know, it's very inconvenient. Like we have to work around, you know, everybody else's schedule, which is, I understand that because obviously, you know, you need people to help. I wonder if there's a way that we could find at least one area in this town where we can have direct access. I mean, what about Gray's Beach? I mean, I've been on that beach and it's not that long so that people could actually, you know, um, have a Moby mat there maybe and, and use that beach. And then we can advertise that as that is a place to go. And it would help also with everyone else that's working with the Moby chairs that, you know, instead of them going all over um, the town, they can like maybe designate an area. That's just my thought, but I know everybody's working on it and I appreciate what An An Anthony's doing and what um, Kathy's doing because she's trying to get some funding. So, and we do have new Moby mats, I was told. So that's great. So, you know, thank you. Know, you. In, the in the other towns, you say the Moby mat goes all the way to the water? They have direct access. Um, to via the, the Moby mat though, not like a I, wooden. Yeah, I believe so. I, I, let me find out more information, but I think it's Howidge and Dennis. I, there's, there's a few beaches there that is very user-friendly. And- You um, have to go to high tide and the, like the mean high tide market. Right. See, the problem is this. When, when people, they're trying to clean the beach, so they can't use the Moby match to go to the right. beach because it would tear up the, but there are, um, access ways that you can get to the beach. I've seen in Florida, um, I Googled it, where it's actually like, like a walkway that's actually a structure that will not be torn up. 
but that means that the people that are doing the leaves or whatever they're doing, they're picking up all that other stuff. Um, you know, they have to go around and I don't know how you can do that. You know, I mean, so it's got to be some planning there. Cause at Seagull beach, there is a, a, a handicap accessible wooden or composite wood walkway with a handicap ramp that gets you like, to the middle of the beach from where the concession right. stand is. Right. Um, so there's that, it doesn't get you all the way to the water. And from there, I, I understand there's challenges at, from that point, but. Yeah, yeah. So, it, it, and then the thing that I noticed too, when we were, um, my friend and I, we were looking around, I guess, you know where the bridge is, where that park is, it's a beautiful area and you can mm -hmm. see the Bass River. The um, she was mentioning that the um, table that's that's uh, does not really will not help somebody that has a wheelchair. They can't get access to uh, be under the, the ch comfortably to sit so they can enjoy, you know, that that um, picnic table. And um, that's another thing, you know, like uh, that's important. So that packet landing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think that the bench is a little bit too low. I mean, um, like I have a problem with uh, getting off chairs because of my knee. So 19 inches seems to be pretty good. Anything lower than that, I it's very difficult to get off. Uh, you know, get stand up. So that's something that we probably want to consider too is uh, looking at the height of these uh, benches to make them more accessible for people that have you know, mobility issues. And that's quite a bit of us <laughs> on the Cape, you know? So uh, that would be very helpful. Low benches are not easy, easily. As far as access to the water, the best way to do that would be in the place where there's no tidal flow, which would be right. Right. right? Because tidal flow is what keeps you from getting to the water 24 seven, because uh, you can't put it below high tide. So, right. you know, it would be to designate some pond that, you get a map out. Yeah, I know they like salt water too, but it, it, you can only do the Moby map so far. Mm. You can't do it farther than low, high pot. Right. Because then it'll just. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. So it's really, what is that? Lax, Dennis, Long. Right? Yeah. Sandy Pond is definitely. Oh, see, I understand. Yeah. This is so steep. Yeah, from what I'm told. It, yeah, 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 there's, yeah. yeah. Snakes and glass, too, I understand it. Well, Same a lot of certain places in Long A lot of glass from a lot of glass. Glass. Oh. Yeah, and Flax Pond is somewhat steep, too, yeah. like going down there. That's also, they can't do that very when they and, and if we had a mat there, you know, it would probably destroy it, too, if we had it during camp. And yeah. Kids would walk all over it and try to play with it. But no, I mean, no one's allowed, I should say, anyway, here in camp, yeah. you know. Um, so wings grow? That, wings grow is too strong. Yeah, that, yeah. that, that, that entrance, right? Yeah. Just too, yeah. yeah. Bill said he was doing something with that. As a new yeah, project. I'm going to look into it to see if there's um, something through fishing and boating <laughs> access. Um, because we did have requests from residents there that See if we could look into improving access. Yeah. Okay, any Cheers. other comments? We have the uh, meeting minutes of March 24th. Do I have a motion regarding the minutes? I can't make a motion because I wasn't. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes as presented. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll accept them. Cool. I'll second that motion. We're here. We gotta do a quorum. Yeah. No. By name. Yeah. We, yeah, don't have, we don't have a quorum to. Yes, you do. Oh, yeah. okay. I, I, the I, way I, it's I, voting is, is um, I think you can, but, um, but it's it's who's present and voting. So if if you're abstaining, it's who who's present yeah, and voting. Right. So you you've got yeah, yeah. you're fine. Yeah. You're okay. So roll call. <laughs> Anthony. Not and no, just no, our no. just our committee. Yeah. Oh, just to commit, just don't. it's so it's, it's Steve, yeah, and me, and Ellie, oh, no. and Gail, and you. Oh. Just go around the. I have to abstain. I wasn't here. Okay, Anthony. Nope. Don't be there. Yeah. yeah. 
I abstain. I wasn't here either. There you go. <laughs> so we'll wait until no, next no, week. you can. No, I, can, so. no I, I agree with you, but the town clerk has told me that it's people who are present and voting and abstention. Voting so I, I, okay, I'll say aye. Nay. No, it's nope. you're done. The, it's just oh, committee members. It's just committee members. Oh, okay. Um, they're Not they're just we're just Not yeah. town staff. <laughs> Not right right. staff. So you you're you're good. Okay. You can ask Cassie. <laughs> okay, mark your calendars. You're an honorary committee member, Kathy. <laughs> mark your calendars for the upcoming meetings on April 21st and hopefully May 5th. And may I remind you that hard copies are available usually about two days ahead if anybody wants hard copies before a meeting. I'll entertain a motion. I will make Here. that motion. I will second that motion. So I am here. Okay, Ellie. Aye. Theo. Theo. Aye. Christine. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Steve. Theo. Okay. We are adjourned. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kathy. All right. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. These are the dates. I won't be here. Oh, wait. Oh, well, I could.